uh, through venture deals in the U.S. And the line portion is venture activity, uh, deal flow, how many deals are getting done on a yearly basis. Um, for this chart, I'll focus on the bar portion, the capital invested, and then we'll dive into the actual activity in one of the next slides when we break the activity down by stage so we can really see what's going on there. Um, this chart, the most interesting thing that pops out here obviously is 2014 um, and 2015, just massive, massive amounts of capital invested um, starting in 2014. And this is when we really saw the age of the unicorns come about. Unicorns, of course, being uh, private companies that are valued at a billion dollars or more. Uh, a lot of unicorns got start, began getting funded in 2014. We'll have a slide later, actually the next slide, which kind of shows you exactly how many over the years. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. But they really drove the, these capital invested figures in 2014 and 2015. These companies are very late stage. Uh, and they've garnered investment sizes that we have not seen probably ever before. Uh, $300 million, $500 million, and you know, for Uber and a select few other companies, even billion dollar rounds, not valuations. Actually, that is the amount of money that they raised in those rounds. Um, and so we see here the actual unicorn trend. Now, uh, the line portion here is not unicorn companies, but actually unicorn deals. Um, over time, by year. So you saw, I mean, there's been unicorns, there's been private companies valued at a billion dollars or more for a long time. But they were few and far between, which is actually the reason why they're called unicorns. It's a mythical creature that you may not see very often. Well, more and more, heading into 2014 and 15, that term didn't mean as much because there were so many. Uh, in the gray box here is an interesting call out nearly $47 billion invested across only 135 companies since 2006. For me, the more impressive number is just those two years between 2014 and 2015. You have essentially 130, about 130 deals that brought in $30 billion in two years' time, which is pretty remarkable. And again, these are deals. Some of these companies raised multiple rounds at these billion dollar valuations within this two year time frame. So it's pretty remarkable stuff. Um, and here we get into kind of how this was possible. Um, if you see the bottom dark green line in this chart, you'll see that uh, fund contributions by limited partners into venture capital funds has stayed pretty even over time gone up a little, down a little, but has stayed relatively consistent. But starting in 2013 and, and after that year, capital invested really shot up. So what happened? We call these tourist investors. Uh, beginning at the end of 2013 and really in 2014 and 15, you saw non-traditional venture investors like mutual funds and hedge funds dip into these late stage uh, private rounds for these massive uniform companies. And uh, we're talking about, I have a list here, uh, Wellington Management, uh, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, T. Rowe Price, Tiger Global. These are some of the kind of tourist investors that came down and funded some of these massive rounds. I'll list off some of the top rounds I have here for 2015 unicorn deals. Uber raised $1.6 billion. Uh, Airbnb, $1.58 billion. Social Finance, $1 billion. Uh, Uber, another billion dollar round in that same year. Lyft, $680 million. Theranos, $573 million. And the list goes on. It's pretty remarkable how much money these companies were able to raise. And that would not be possible if that money was coming strictly from venture capital firms and angel investors and the traditional uh, investors that we see in, in the venture ecosystem. And this gap here is, just shows how much of an impact these tourist investors have had uh, on, on the funding environment. So now we kind of go back to the, the first chart that we looked at, the, the deal activity. This is a, a similar chart, except this breaks down that deal activity, that line that we saw just going on a linear path up. It breaks
breaks it down by stage of investment. So when you look at that first chart, you say, hey, venture activity has been <coughs> going up and up since 2010. It's just, it's just going crazy. That's not quite the case. It's actually mainly the angel and seed stage where we've seen that trend really skyrocket. And I think that you know applies the most to the, this room, obviously, um, because that these are the earliest stages that have really been driving that trend of activity going up consistently on a yearly basis. You see the change in the early stage BC, which we consider series A, B, and then the later stage BC, which we consider C and later, not changing all that much, although it's increasing as well. Uh, now, a few reasons for this constant rise since 2010. Um, list off some of them. So, I think in the past few years, starting a company has been easier than ever before. Um, we see a lot of uh, the, the venture uh, inventory, uh, or at least companies coming in to attract venture funding, or seed funding, or angel funding. There are more than ever before. Um, and there's also been a proliferation of accelerators. So, I'm sure most of you are aware of what accelerators are. Essentially programs that um, probably do a lot of things that Thai angels do, uh, except they also, like tags, invest in the companies. They will give companies small investments, they will give them mentorship, um, they will give them direction, um, make them pivot if necessary, but they develop these companies and eventually get them to a place where they are ready for angel funding, seed funding, um, and to you know, be in the, in the VC environment. So the proliferation of uh, accelerators has definitely aided in more and more companies being in a position to raise these <coughs> rates. Um, there's also been a rise in micro VC funds, which we consider uh, venture capital funds $50 million or smaller in size. Uh, and this is not just small VC firms that are raising these small funds. Some VC firms have no choice but to raise micro VC funds. That's as much money as they can raise. But we, we've also seen later stage venture capital investors raising smaller funds to enter the early stage and the C market, which is an interesting trend. So there, it's been easier to start a company. Accelerators have been pumping out more and more companies, adding to that inventory. And now even later stage investors are coming in and uh, making capital available for those types of companies to be funded. Finally, over the last few years, there, there's been a relatively <coughs> loose funding environment. I think it's generally understood that VC investors have, have been a little careless with <coughs> their investments. I think some pretty ridiculous companies have been funded. And we've seen this loose funding environment for, for quite some time. It's finally starting to tighten uh, in the last few quarters, maybe the last year. And we'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, and then there's that interesting dip after 2014. And the dip doesn't look too bad. We're going from 5,300 to 5,200, not a big deal, right? But if we break down this same chart instead of by year, by quarter, you'll actually see what led to that 2015 total. And it was a very strong start, but the back half of 2015, seed deals really began to slide. And in the first quarter of 2016, the trend continues. And there's a few reasons why deal activity at the seed stage, at the angel and seed stage specifically, has really began to slide. Uh, number one, investors, founders, companies have just gotten a little smarter. They realized for a long time that they were too careless with their spending. They were moving into crazy offices. They were getting ping pong tables and lounge chairs for everyone spending a little too much money, being a little too careless. So I think since about you know the second half of 2015, companies really buckled down and said, hey, this funding environment is not going to be around forever. We're not going to continue just getting money whenever we want to. So we, we really have to buckle down. So I think as advised by LPs and by VCs that invest in these companies, uh, they really buckled down and burn rates started coming down. Burn rate, for anyone who doesn't know, essentially how fast a company is spending money. Um, the faster, uh, the larger your burn rate, the sooner you need money. And that's kind of been the issues companies have needed money more and more sooner and sooner. 
So burn rates started uh, getting lower. Uh, companies are have a longer runway, meaning they can wait longer to raise additional money. So we're seeing um, this lead to a decrease in, in the annual C deals as well. Um, then there's caution, cautious investors. Um, investors, you know, like I mentioned earlier, are targeting more quality companies. They're being a little more selective and careful where their money is going. Um, and I think the most risk clearly <coughs> is the earliest stages. So we've seen the impact there uh, probably the largest. Uh, and so these are all kind of the factors that are leading to this decline. And finally, I will just mention higher valuations across all stages are just pricing some investors out of these early stage deals. Whereas you have traditional angel and traditional seed investors who have smaller funds, who don't have a ton of money to invest, they kind of by design are in, at this stage. Well, you have, like I mentioned, later stage venture capital firms uh, creating micro VC funds, coming into these seed stage fundings and taking up all the good companies. And of course, for the companies that are left, going back again, uh, investors at this stage are being a lot more selective because there's a ton of risk here. So a lot of the reasons that uh, we've seen the decline in the past few quarters. There's also an interesting thing that the increase here over the really the past few years but especially over maybe you know the four quarter stretch in, in 2014, that rise in seed funding is going to be very troublesome, and it naturally has also led to the decline in in these finances. <coughs> um, how many people here have heard the term Series A? Crime? 